Key officials in Cebu have come up with a decision to implement the executive order issued by Governor Gwendolyn Garcia instead of following the new guidelines issued by the Department of Health through the Interagency Task Force on COVID-19 for overseas Filipino workers or OFWs and returning overseas Filipinos or ROFs. This means that they will be swabbed upon arrival at the airport and will immediately be allowed to go home within three days if their RT-PCR test comes out negative. Governor Gwendolyn Garcia stood firm by her executive order because she can no longer allow the Department of Health, which is getting advice from three medical advisors, to rule over local government units because this has already gone beyond their powers. The governor invokes Section 105 of the Local Government Code, which provides that the Secretary of the Department of Health can only rule over LGUs for an accumulated period of six months during medical emergencies such as COVID-19 pandemic. In this case, the DOH Secretary and his advisors has been issuing policies through the IATF for over a year now. Section 105 also provides should IATF continue to issue policies, it should be in concurrence with the local government units concerned. But the latest Resolution 114 did not pass through a consultation with any LGU. So if need be, I'll fight for Cebu. And I'll fight for this local autonomy under Republic Act 7166, of which my father was one of the framers. Governor Garcia believes this is a usurpation on the local autonomy of the local government units. Last Monday, March 10, Governor Garcia called for an emergency meeting with all line agencies, including the Mactan Cebu International Airport and Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, or OWA, to get their consensus on the issue. After they learned of the insistence of Health Secretary Francisco Duque to follow IATF's latest rule. Governor Garcia insisted on Section 105 of RA 7160, saying that a president's executive order formulating the IATF cannot supersede a law passed by Congress. An executive order in the order of its efficacy cannot go higher than a congressional act. During the meeting, DOH-7 officials, in concurrence with the Department of Interior and Local Government, Bureau of Quarantine and other government agencies, decided to implement the province's policy to do away with the mandatory quarantine. They will be swabbed for COVID-19 upon arrival at Mactan Cebu International Airport or MCIA and will be released once the negative result comes out. DOH-7 Regional Director Dr. Jaime Bernadas said that the swabbing policy was agreed upon after consulting with the leaders of three other cities in Cebu, namely Cebu City, Mandawi City, and Lapu-Lapu City. And that would include after also a consultation with the Tri-Cities. So that this will be a one-island swabbing upon arrival. Dr. Mary Jean Loreche said that Cebu does not need to follow the schemes IATF wants implemented because statistics show that COVID-19 positive cases in Cebu are going down and the recovery rate is increasing. She added that the local officials in Cebu already know how to handle the COVID-19 situation and that there is already a system in place which works for Cebu. Well, it is really clearly shown by our numbers and our data that we have very good case control management. We learned our lessons from the first wave that we had. We never agreed to be locked down. We showed that our recovery rate for positives is highest when we test them upon arrival. Because our systems and processes are already in place, we can afford to do the testing upon arrival, and when they are negative, they are released to their LGU subject to compliance of the quarantine and, of course, the testing protocol in that LGU. This is only for us here. We are not recommending it for national adaptation. The reason is very simple. We have the protocols, the systems, and processes. In last week's press conference in Camotes Island, 
Dr. Loretche gave a sample computation as to how much the national government or every individual will be spending if they follow the IATF rule of mandatory hotel quarantine. In the past, OWA would spend 11,200 pesos per OFW if it followed the IATF rule. But the governor's EO reduced this to 4,200 pesos per OFW if the OFW is swabbed upon arrival and released on the third day. For an average flight of 220 passengers, OWA would spend 2.4 million pesos for one flight alone, whereas this can be reduced to 924,000 pesos with the governor's EO. With hotels increasing their daily rates to 2,500 pesos, OWA will be spending 25,000 pesos for each passenger or an equivalent of 5.5 million pesos for one flight with 220 passengers. Non-OFWs will have to spend 25,000 pesos of their own money. Whereas with Garcia's EO-17, the government will only pay for three days, which is 70% less. Where is the sense here? Pabayro ni mo ug additional? Ug unong pakaadlaw? How much is that going to further cost OWA? Of course, national government na say mo bayad, anak. Karun pa, that the national government is already reeling with these effects of an economic meltdown. Naglisod na ta. Pabayron pa? O niya, kani mga returning Filipinos, nadili ang owa mo bayad. I mo pa ng pabayron o additional, may nalang unta na, iyan na magasto sa inyong pamilya ng giulian. Meanwhile, Mandawi City Mayor Jonas Cortez expressed support to the governor's stand. Support kami sa kwa ni Gov, no? similar mig stand sa kwa na. Kasabot me, um, well, uh, being a local chief uh, executive, ang uh, ato yung katuyuan nga dili na to lisod-lisuron ang atong mga subuhan. No? EO 17 was passed into law on May 10, 2021 through an ordinance approved by the Cebu Provincial Board on 1st, 2nd and 3rd reading. The ordinance, sponsored by Provincial Board Member John Ismael Borgonia, took effect immediately after the governor signed it. It makes sense mga nga ikabot, testing na yung litsyo para makasave o uh, oras niya makasave sa ang gobyerno. Tingin mo lang yung ordinance ha, instead of uh, EO para mas na may permanency, then uh, para nasa uh, ngipon po, no? So, in support sa uh, executive orders ato ang uh, governor. Well, these geniuses don't seem to have the capacity to actually translate what they are saying so grandly into reality. With reports from Carlo Lorenciana, this is Paula Mendoza for Balita sa Sugbu.